so it's time for another edition of This Little Asshole. Grady's not an asshole. Oh, no. No. Oh, no. No. So last week, my girlfriend Sarah visited and she brought her puppy. Oh, yeah. Lucky. How'd that go? Did they make friends? Ish. That's better than we expected. Loki didn't. Loki was perfectly good. He stayed out of Grady's way. He was very sweet and and just the perfect little thing. And he'd lay down on the couch. And this little fucker, for one thing, whenever Grady, whenever Loki stood up, Grady was like, Jesus Christ, the world is ending. <laughs> But by the end of, like, Thursday night, he was coming downstairs to investigate stuff, and he was sniffing Loki, and Loki was just like, hi, I'm not going to hurt you, please. He's at, Loki's actually a little scared of cats, even though oh. he's great, big, goofy. But he's a sweet dog. And we thought everything was fine, the dog was out of your house, and then what did you do this weekend? Um, he stole all my towels out of the hamper and built a nest in the closet. He, uh, what else did he, uh, Saturday morning I woke up and there was no internet. And I was like, what the fuck is wrong with this? And I went downstairs to check. He knocked the router off the table. <laughs> he tore a hole in the green screen. I did see that. Yeah. And this is like three feet off the floor. Yeah. So he well, like, he's, he's a big boy. He launched himself at it and like yes. and then today just before the show started like at i think what was it uh 10 minutes to show time i'm up here getting everything ready i hear this loud fucking crash from the kitchen like a fucking car wreck and i'm like jesus christ i go downstairs this little shithead <laughs> had knocked the dish rack Oh, no. Off the counter. Oh, no. And look at him hiding. Look at him hiding. No, I didn't do nothing. Three glasses were smashed. I'm amazed you're okay. And he's just sitting there in the middle of it, swishing his tail back and forth like, hi. Hi. I, I, don't, know. Know, I don't know how all this shit happened. I don't know. Yes, you are just still freaking out. Grady's just, you've been bad. Oh, he's hiding. look at him. He's hiding. Grady, it's okay. I still love you. You were a bad kitty. You were Our a girls bird. have just been having great fun beating the shit out of everything on the bottom of the Christmas tree. We had a pear, a big pear ornament like that big. And last night, Peggy was just like speed bagging it. <laughs> this is why I, a sock monkey ornament. And like we put all the stuff that we didn't mind if the kittens murdered toward the bottom and that wouldn't be dangerous for them because they're kittens and they've never seen a Christmas tree before. So they were going to fucking murder it. So I have like little, a sock monkey ornament and a little stuffed hippo. And those, every time we hang them, they last maybe 20 minutes before they're gone again. I'm I'm a little bit glad I don't normally do a Christmas tree because... Hi, baby. Oh, you want to beat me up? I'm sure I'm sure if I did a Christmas tree, Grady would would flat out destroy the motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, we do have Dan put all his like hand under the Christmas tree skirt. He put like four hand weights <laughs> so they can't knock it over. There's like 25 pounds of weight. Oh, give them a chance. So they're just waiting. Oh, and we're pretty confident we have it far enough away from their tower that they can't launch. Ow, baby, I am not the red dot. Hi, can I have my arm back? Baby, you're stuck on my sweater. I mean, thank you. Thank you. I love you. You're a good kitty. Okay. What? What? I know. what? Ow, ow, baby, what? that's my arm. What? You shut up. You've been bad. You were bad. Baby, that's my arm. I need that. <laughs> baby. Oh, life with cats. Ow! No, no, you may not know on my arm, Peggy. No, I'm sorry. I know you're high on the red... Ow! Baby, you just punched a hole in my thumb. I know you're stuck. I'm trying to help. Okay, there you go. Yay. Okay. okay. So... I'm sorry. I'm sorry my arm was there. I know, it's my fault. Jesus! I know. Chill. Chill. Peggy's our little brawler. Like, Chill. we name them appropriately, because she is totally a Peggy Carter-style fucking brawler. 
Well, Dottie's more of like a cerebral assassin. Like she waits for her opportunity. Well, now it is time for the nonsense. And Jesus. Do you want to do the nonsense? I really don't, because my comment section is going to be a fucking nightmare after this first story. The comment section is always a fucking nightmare. They hate me. I don't even know why they watch me. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And uh, let's adjust my camera just a wee bit so you can see my mo- the edge of my monitor. Um, this first story this week, I often get complaints. You shouldn't do political stuff. You shouldn't do political stuff. And normally, you know what? I don't. Because I just don't like dealing with the You bullshit. guys, you, you got in too political. The show used to be fun, but now it's just you guys bitching about liberal shit and feminism. Except now, this is, I already know this is going to be my next four years. This is going to be the next four fucking years. Because now, the political news and the stupid news. What are you eating? No, no, you cannot eat that. No, give me that. <laughs> That's not food. Whatever the fuck that is. That's not food. The political news and the stupid news often had a little bit of an intersection, but yeah. not anything really extreme. Oh, it's going to... Now, it. however, now it's just, it's a fucking T-bone at an intersection. This Venn diagram is going to become a fucking circle. Let's start with, and there's no other way to describe this than terrifying stupidity. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring you yeah. Pizzagate. Let's give you a brief... As I think you noted on Twitter, like there are people that don't believe in global warming, but the believe that this is true. Here's, in a very brief nutshell, what's gone on. Somehow, based on the leaked Podesta emails... Reddit and 4chan are convinced there is a child sex ring being run by Hillary Clinton and her staff out of a public pizza parlor in Washington, D.C. And this is some down the rabbit hole crazy bullshit going on. Like, I didn't even know Alex, J- Alex Jones had a Mad Libs book out. Like, for example, they're convinced all this stuff's happening in the basement. The fucking pizza parlor they're convinced this is happening in doesn't have a fucking basement. In the basement of the Alamo. They went through all of these, these emails and found what they thought were code words. Like, hot dogs are a code word for young boys. This is this is some grassy knoll Apollo I mean, fake. I mean, also though, there have been, they've proven this. Like they've spoken to people that just have straight up written fake news. Yeah. Selection season. And people bought it. And where this collides into real into the real world is a jackass from North Carolina. Edgar Madison Welch. Really? Madison? That's your middle name? Madison? Madison? With two Ds. With two Ds. 28 years old of Salisbury, North Carolina, came to self-investigate Pizzagate with an AR-15. Walked into the restaurant and, and fired at least one shot why is it always a goddamn AR-15? Because that's America's gun. Is this like the official gun of any cocks everywhere? Yeah. Like, is this officially the gun you buy to replace your penis when yeah. it stops working? Yep. Or when girls won't touch it? Pretty much he walked into a public pizza place, fired off the gun, intent on busting the whole thing wide open. Here's the thing. If they really were running a kitty porn ring out of that pizza place and you fired your gun, what happens if you hit one of those kids, hero? 
didn't even need to have a child set because it's a family pizza place. There are kids there the anyway. Of the fact that this is not a legitimate investigatory method. No. You are not law enforcement or a private investigator or the government. Yeah. You're a fucking psychotic. We so, would call you a terrorist if you weren't a white guy. Seriously, what did you think was going to happen? You were going to go in there with your gun and find definitive proof and the cops are going to show up and be like, oh, well, he found this proof. Thank you, concerned citizen. You can go now. That's not how this shit works. He thought he was fucking Batman is what he thought. Yeah, that's, you know what? There is no real Batman. No, there isn't. There isn't. Do you know why? The closest, the, be closest arrested. Got, the closest thing we've got to a real life Batman is probably like Bill Gates. Because he's kind of an eccentric, kooky millionaire who's using his vast fortune to try and save the world. Except he's not doing it dressed up it, like right. a fucking He's not wearing flying, hockey pants. He's not, he's not a flying rodent. Right. The thing. And he's certainly not busting into a pizza place with an AR-15. Batman does use guns in the Frank Miller comics. I know this because I have friends that are very offended by it. <laughs> Here's, here's the thing about conspiracies. They don't exist. Conspiracies are much like ghosts and unicorns and Bigfoot. Stop pointing at me. There, except for the Denver International Airport. That shit is real. Because Google it. the number of people necessary to keep absolute silence about any given conspiracy is impractical and improbable. Unless you have definitive, most of what's going on with this, with this conspiracy and most every conspiracy is you can't prove it's not true. Ergo, it may be true. Here's the thing, with the scrutiny the Clintons have been under for three decades, if they were running a pedophilia ring out of a pizza place, we would have found out by now. Like, the, enti like, the entire GOP has been very interested in exactly where oh, Bill yeah. Clinton's dick has been and every possibly shady thing the Clintons have ever done. Yeah. The, who would have the I incentive? I'm not saying they haven't done shady shit, because they have. Who would have the incentive? If they were doing this shady this? thing, we would know. Who would have the incentive to protect this? No one. It's like it, and, and it's like the absence of evidence is not evidence. You can't say, I mean, I could right now tell you unicorns exist because you can't prove they don't. You cannot definitively prove to me there's no such thing as a unicorn. That's not logic. That's crazy. I mean, you can't prove that they don't exist. You can't. You cannot disprove a negative. It's not. It's just. Uh. I mean, but in this case, you can prove that there isn't a pedophilia ring run out of this pizza place because the pizza place doesn't have a basement where it was running out of. Like, you can go in uh. and look around and see that there are no children being sodomized. Yeah. And know that that is true. This is going to be the next four years. This is going to be the next four fucking this years. This and angry tweets about Saturday Night Live. And yeah. You know what? The only good thing about I mean, this the is... The good news is, if this president gets a blowjob in the Oval Office, it'll probably be from his own daughter. So... The, the only good part about this is nobody got hurt this time. Thank God. Yeah, this time. <sighs> Buckle your seatbelts, kids. Let's move on just, just to, to some regular stupid crazy. The comments are going to be amazing. You have fun with them. I'm going to ignore the fuck out of them <laughs> like I always do. Um, let's move on to Australia. Oh, God. Do you know that there are so many problems in life that can be solved simply by Googling something? Yeah, like Pizzagate. In this case, there Denver is... Denver International Airport. It's not a thing, Kara. It is. It's not a thing. In this case, this is... I, I, I can grant the guy was a concerned citizen trying to do the right thing. 
trying to be upright and and bless his heart. However, <sighs> Australian man's breast implant find revealed as jellyfish. A jellyfish was handed to Australia to police in Australia under the mistaken belief it was a breast implant and possible evidence of a crime. Oh. A concerned man submitted the bagged and tagged circular object to officers uh, on Queensland's Sunshine Coast late last week. He feared it might have indicated a drowning or possibly a murder. Police station said in a statement they had confirmed the fine was not sinister. Officers were all hands on deck when, much to their initial alarm, a concerned citizen attended the counter to report a possible homicide. Investigations reveal what the police suspected. The item was indeed a jellyfish. The discovery was most likely a blubber jellyfish, the species commonly found in Queensland waters. The sting was irritating, but not dangerous. The tentacles have been knocked off by wave action or eaten by fish. Couple of things. Couple of things. Breast implants don't sting. Yeah. I mean, maybe we should add that as a feature, though. <laughs> what the next four years are going to be like for women. Maybe we should add that as a feature, that breast implants will fucking shock you. The tip taser, everyone. I mean, maybe that's a marketable plan. Anyway, breast implants will very rarely sting you. <laughs> Two, if you drown, your breast implants aren't going to fall out. Yeah. That's not how they work. Unless, you know, if, if someone was murdered, maybe, but. If they were murdered, but even then, even if you're stabbed in the chest, it's not like it's just going to fall out. Like, you have to purposely remove them. They also. You have to, like, they're in there. The thing about breast implants is, if you had just Googled breast implant, obviously you would have had some amazing sites with safe search turned off. But if you just Googled it, in fact, I'm going in, guys. I'm going in. I'm going to do it right now just to show you how easy this is. Let's have a look. Okay, here we go. If you just... All right, there we go. I'm not going to get kicked off the internet for this one. If you just Googled breast implant, here's a perfect image of one. Bring it on over. That's a breast implant. Yeah, they don't really look like jellyfish. No, they don't. Let's compare and contrast. This is a breast implant. This is not. Breast implant, not. I mean, at least they did point out that the tentacles weren't there because I was, my third point was going to be breast implants very rarely have tentacles unless and you get the Cthulhu kind. Another thing breast implants have, serial numbers. That's yeah. another important thing. Jellyfish no serial number. It's a good thing to remember for, for future reference. Jellyfish. But like, even, I just want to reiterate that like, when we say blessed implant, we're not talking about the chicken cutlet that you stick inside your bra. No. Because those exist. Yeah. I'm feeling myself up a lot here. I <laughs> <laughs> Breast implants are inside of your body. And it takes a pretty serious procedure to remove them. Like if you drown, you're not going to cough it up. That's not how it works. It's not like it's going to fall out of your bathing suit. Although that would have made Baywatch hilarious. Yeah. Would have made the CPR a lot more risky. Uh, we're moving on next to Chicago. Dottie, why are you giving one. the internet the butt? And, and this... this You're giving the whole internet the butt right now. That's rude. I don't think she cares. Come here. There we go. Turn around. Good girl. Thank you. This next one is a matter of take the win, guy. You, 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 you won, take the win. Comes to us from Chicago. Man tries to, ro to rob Southwest uh, Side Bank, refuses to take the cash. Mike just PM'd me to be like, please tell me women don't actually put chicken cutlets in their bra. Not, not real ones, guys. <laughs> <laughs> they, we, we call them chicken cutlets because they're little bits of silicone that look like chicken cutlets. We don't really put chicken in our bra. Sorry, go on. A man tried to rob a Garfield Ridge neighborhood bank in a grocery store late Monday morning, 
but refused to take the money. Then what were you doing? The man went to the bank branch and tried to rob it, threatening employees by saying he had a weapon. But when a bank employee tried to give the man money, the robber refused to take it and abruptly walk out of the bank. Then what were you doing? Were, were you not? Did, do you not know how this works? This is... It's this is one of those. Give me all your money. Fuck you, man. I don't need no charity. <laughs> yeah, it's it's you won. Congrats. Well, if you get away. I'm all possibly I'm thinking this might have been, you know, he got in the situation and was like, wait a minute, I probably shouldn't do this. Hold on. Um, no, uh, let's get a do over. I'm just going to leave. It's OK. No harm, no foul. I'm gone. Yeah, I mean, that's the only thing I could think of is he had a sudden case of cold feet. Except it doesn't work that way. Because once you've gotten to the point where you're telling them, I have a gun, give me the money, you're done. You have already committed a crime, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you get the money and leave or not, you're still going to jail. Yeah. When they catch your ass. Going to jail for less, maybe less time? Yeah. Because then it's just attempted grand larceny. Yeah, but you're still going to jail because you have yeah. that's one they don't give. They're not really, you know, they're not like, oh, OK, you didn't take the money this time. You also, rascal. When robbing a bank, please conceal your face. Yeah, because now now the, the FBI are looking for this guy wearing yeah. a, a five foot eight, 180 pounds, wearing a red black hooks uh, hooded sweatshirt. Work gloves, safety glasses, a black knit hat, jeans, and had a Motorola radio on his left shoulder. Anyone with information should contact the Chicago office, the FBI, at 312-421-6700. We are doing our good bit for the safety of America. We're like America's most wanted stupids. Yeah. Have you seen this idiot? <laughs> If you've seen this idiot, call our hotline. I know. Just it. We should get a crossover deal with. Uh, why can't I think of that guy's name? John Adam Walsh. John Walsh. Yeah. Can you imagine putting John Walsh on the show? He'd be like, "What the fuck is wrong with you people?" Hey, there's we got our we title got drop. Up. We got a title drop. Yay. Uh, so let's head back to uh, North Carolina. Which, uh, congrats, North Carolina, for finally getting that whole governor thing sorted out today. Yeah. However, <sighs> this guy from Macon County, North Carolina. You remember back when we were playing uh, Vampire the Masquerade? You remember how people in-game would get bored? So they would just do stuff? Yeah. Like, blow things up? Or try to kill other characters. Yeah. Or just because, why? Because they were bored. Because I didn't get any plot. So... Welcome to it going from LARP to the really real fucking world. Arson suspect says he lit wildfires out of boredom. Not the really, really big ones. No, that was Tennessee. That was Tennessee. Man is accused of lighting brush fires in the North Carolina mountains, told a federal forestry agent he'd done it because he wanted a little excitement. I guess I was just bored, Keith Eugene Mann said when confronted about the fires. Um, Mann said he had difficulty getting the first fire go going and finally resorted to stacking up kitchen matches, then lighting them. He said he used the same method to start the second fire and then decided to call authorities because... He got worried about the blaze. Man, yeah, you set a forest fire. Man told authorities he, quote, wanted to see something burn. Which, you know, many men feel that impulse over their lives. Many women feel that impulse over their lives. You know what you do? You get a fireplace. You have a bonfire in your backyard. You burn a picture of your ex. Whatever. You don't set a fucking forest fire. Because then your act of boredom 
has the potential to kill people, kill animals, destroy people's homes, destroy ecosystems, further fuck over our environment by killing trees that clean the air and fucking up the air. Because you were bored. <sighs> and we, it, yes, 16 acres were scorched in the fires. Now, this was not related to the Gatlinburg fires, but you can kind of look at the Gatlinburg for why you shouldn't do this shit. Yeah. It's not like, ooh, I'm going to set a fire to be pretty and I'm going to go home. No, the fire goes elsewhere. Like things to do when you're bored. Download Angry Birds. Take up knitting. Watch a movie. Watch Twitch. I do that when I'm bored. Annoy your cat. I do that when I'm bored too. Isn't that right? You little asshole. Take a nap. Yep. Not set things on fucking fire. Go to Dunkin' Donuts. Not set things. Not set the forest on fire. Fire. Sir. Fire is not your Netflix. <sighs> If you want Netflix, get Netflix. Don't set shit on fire. Why do we have to? Why did God? How or at least set your own shit on fire if you're going to be that kind of asshole. Yeah. Why do I have to say that? So many times over the years, I've had to ask to say, why do I have to say this out loud? Why is this not already? And so why do I have to say these things out loud? Oh, uh, speaking of why do I have to say these things out loud? This next one comes from Houston. All right. You, you were flying recently. Uh, you just got back from Hawaii a while back, right? Yeah, about two months back. Did you have the encounter of when the plane landed? Oh, I've been married for two months. Yeah, you have. When the plane landed, did you have that wonderful people get your shit and get out of my way experience? Not really, because we flew first class. Oh, well, yeah. Which right. is much, much less crowded. And the rush, the the mad push for the doors is much less bad. But I have experienced that and it sucks. Yeah, I, and I get it. I get you have to get to your connections. You're looking just to get the fuck off the plane. I, You've been locked up in a tube with recycled air for a number of hours. I get the impulse. I do. However... There is no cheat codes to this shit. No. Woman opens emergency exit and jumps out of plane. Why do people fuck with air? Like, airport staff do not fuck around. Woman opened the emergency exit doors and jumped out of the plane as it was taxiing down a runway in Houston, startling passengers on board. Startling? Really? Well, that's also really unsafe. Like, planes are pretty high off the ground. Yeah, it sounds like tuck and roll, you know? No. And also, they're moving pretty fast and have giant tires that will crush you. And there's a jet still going. There's a turbine yeah. still. Like, that's, that's not safe. The United Airlines flight had just landed in Houston from New Orleans and was headed toward its gate at the George Bush Intercontinental Airport when the incident happened Monday afternoon. I realized when the door popped open and a woman stepped out of it, Pastor Hampton Friedman told CNN, he was sitting across the aisle and posted a short video of the open door. The woman, who was not identified, was treated for non-life and threatening injuries. She was not charged. Really? Which... How the fuck not? How did... How, how did... Like in our in our age of complete terrorism paranoia, how did how did you just it just and she's lucky she wasn't hurt worse. She's like lucky that's a, she ain't dead. That's a long drop onto concrete under a in immensely heavy, very fast moving thing with powerful engines. Not only that, as There's a result, six different ways you could die doing that. Do you know what happens when there's an incident on a plane? Nobody gets off the plane. Nobody gets off the plane. And if you look down here further, you'll see there's a picture. There's the police. There's the, the, dogs. the dogs. Nobody's getting off the plane. Nobody's making their connection. Everybody's so stuck. Because you, you're more fucking important than everybody. Everybody else now misses their connections, mm -hmm. doesn't get their baggage, doesn't get to pee. 
You an asshole, lady. Because you're more important than everybody else. Fuck, the, fuck you. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You, you were, fuck you. I'm not feeling very articulate tonight. Just fuck you. You don't get to do that. You don't, it's not a toy. It's not, you don't fuck with the airplane. Like, you know how really bad people every now and then suggest sending all the homosexuals to an island or all the whoever to an island? Why can't we send all the fucking entitled assholes who think they're more important than everyone else to an island? That would be the worst island on the planet, but at least we'd all be rid of them. And they could all duke it out over who's the most important until they die. You've never read Atlas Shrugged, I take it. I'm aware of the concept. There yeah. you go. There. And I guess that's basically the same thing. It's the same I'm thing, thinking, isn't it? Yeah. Except I'm thinking more of like an entitled asshole Hunger Games. <laughs> <laughs> and you know oh, put a starbucks dream. there entirely run by robots so they can't torture people we can dream yeah i was speaking of entitled asshole mother fuck I don't know. We don't have a lot of funny this week. We have a lot of angry this week. We do. We do. Our last one this week comes from uh, Southern California. It's bad enough to get into a fight with another person in public. Because you're already either an asshole or on the receiving end of an asshole. Yeah. And it's embarrassing. And everybody's looking at you. And yeah. This is called compounding the error. And we got video. Oh boy. Oh boy, yes. Let's let's bring that up right now so everyone can see cuz we have video. Um All right. What well, starts off with a fight between two people which other people were just standing around videoing. Like but, you did. But then it turned into this. And I want to point out this fight is over a parking space. And then they're smashing it, and she pulls back, she pulls back, and then she hits it again. And... So did they... They were in a fist fight, and then they jumped back into their cars? And started jousting. Car jousting. Really? Really. Like, they weren't punching each other hard enough, so they had to go the Autobots route? I And it just keeps going, too. And everybody in the parking lot is just watching this shit. And there's crashing and smashing and I don't even. Parking lot brawl between two women in South Los Angeles quickly escalated into a demolition derby. A number of women were seen fighting when one woman jumped into a white SUV. The driver revved the engine and the video showed her smashing into a silver SUV, nearly taking off the passenger door. Vehicles collide several more times as they maneuver back and forth in the small parking lot. SUVs headed into the street where the white SUV was spotted delivering one more crunching blow to the silver SUV. The white SUV then mowed down a fire hydrant, setting a geyser of water into the air. You know what's worse than not getting a parking space? Prison. Prison, yeah. That's one they're, they're, they're just... What the fuck? Did no one in this entire insane melee stop and think, wait a second. We are acting like complete assholes. These are people that should go to the island. On top of that, it's not the lost island. They're not good enough for that. I'm talking entitled asshole paradise island. You know what your insurance doesn't pay for? Assholery. You deliberately smashing your car into another car while it's being videotaped. Yeah, they ain't gonna cover that. So, not only have you not gotten a parking space, you fucked up your car. A lot. A lot. And public property and somebody else's car. So, that's a lot of money out the window. And possibly charges. 
Do you know what running over a fire hydrant has the potential to do to your undercarriage? Those things are fucking heavy. Yeah, they're made that way on purpose. Yeah. That's not easy to do. Oh, it is not. I mean, goddamn. Do you, you have nothing better to do with your life than to get into a fucking fist fight over a parking space. But this is like our, our society has problems, man. Like Black Friday, people are getting trampled for a cheap TV. We're having demolition derbies over parking spaces. Like we have fucked up our priorities and our psyche severely. We're setting forest fires because we're bored. Like we got problems. And I think we kind of deserve the rapture that's inevitably coming. Or we deserve to have been left behind from the rapture that already happened and took David Bowie and everybody else. Because we fucked. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Nope. <laughs> uh-uh. Uh-uh. That jingle's bullshit, by the way, because I tried it many times while Dan was living in Atlanta and working for State Farm, and he didn't show up once. So I guess the first thing we have to ask this week is when you or find yourself in a heated confrontation, you've got to think two steps ahead and say, hmm, what's the outcome that probably won't land me in jail? Like, we're so far beyond, like, forget what would Jesus do? We got to move to, like, what would a sensible adult do? <laughs> like, we are nowhere near what would Jesus do at this point. That's that's some fucking advanced calc shit. We, we are not there. We are at the algebra of what would a logical thinking adult being do? And, of course, if, you, if your answer to what would Jesus do be smash someone with an SUV, go back to church. Yeah. You ain't learn. You learn wrong. Go back to church. Flipping a table is an option. Yeah, he, he did that. He flipped the table. He did not knock over a goddamn fire hydrant over a parking space. I mean, I guess you could argue that they had neither SUVs nor fire hydrants, but I think the point stands. I don't think he would have done it anyway. We've learned that leave shit on an airplane alone. Yeah. It's not. The emergency exit quite clearly says... What the what the exit is for, and you not getting out of the plane fast enough ain't That's a goddamn an emergency. Emer it's not a goddamn emergency. No, not an emergency, unless you're on fire. We and speaking of fire, we've learned if you're bored, get a goddamn hobby. Yeah, get a goddamn hobby. Don't light shit on fire, especially shit on fire that don't belong to you. Fuck's sake. You hear that? My nephew walked up. We, we were at my niece's first birthday party this weekend. And my nephew, Patrick, who I used to live down the hall from, came running up to Uncle Dan, all proud. And he goes, Uncle Dan, I built a bomb in school this week and it worked. And I'm like, what a lovely influence you've already had on the children in this family. I didn't teach him anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've learned that if you try to rob a bank. Take the money? No, we've learned that you, you can't really just sort of go halfway on this one. Yeah. You, you don't get like, you know, a pass there's, because there's, you didn't take the money. Yeah, there's no backseas. You're still going to jail. We've learned your heart is in the right place, but maybe you should actually look up google something before you assume that someone's dead somewhere but i mean how do you google what's this thing in my hand he thought it was a breast implant i just showed you look boom google there it is that's what okay, a breast google, implant is what's this thing in my hand there's actually an app for that it's called google goggles oh you, cool you, yeah it's called google goggles you can take a take your phone hold it up to an object google will look at it and do an image comparison online and figure out what it is we are so going to get overtaken by the machines like any minute and at this point and you all you all know how i feel about robots 
I'm kind of cool with it. And finally, we learn tonight conspiracies are not real. Knock it the fuck off, you crazy son of a bitch. But some of them probably are. There's no, there is no Denver International Airport conspiracy, Tara. It's an Illuminati bunker for the end times. You're, you're embarrassing us. It's true. You're embarrassing us. It's built on a, on, a, on a plot of land four times bigger than it needs to be. And there are water tanks that hold way more fuel or tanks that hold way more fuel and water than the airport possibly needs. And it's filled with weird like Nazi and satanic symbolism art. And it has a big demonic horse at the start with a giant blue dick. And the runways form a swastika. Look, in a year when everything goes to shit and Beyonce and Jay-Z are mysteriously missing, Denver International Airport. That's all I'm saying. You know, if you're trying to kill me, there are faster ways than giving me a stroke. <laughs>